Pre-order the Clownfish TV comic book right now on Indiegogo. Go to clownfishtvcomic.com. That's clownfishtvcomic.com. This is a fun collection of all new comic strips based on dumb stuff we've said on the show. Again, that's clownfishtvcomic.com. You're going to have to hurry. We're only taking pre-orders for a limited time. Now we're going to get back into the show. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video, but we're going to talk about yet another video game website shutting down. And this particular website was very, very anti-capitalism. They were loud and proud about it. And surprisingly, the money ran out. Oh my God, can you imagine the money ran out? We're going to talk about Waypoint getting shut down. I actually thought Waypoint got shut down before. I think they gutted staff before, but now it is like completely gone. This is Vice's video game website. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the state of the media Um you know, we've got this article out here on Intelligence or New York. Uh, it's a media massacre, a media massacre. Things are bad. Things are really bad. And it's not just on one side of the aisle either. I mean, you know, of course, we know what happened with uh, Tucker Carlson. It's like Tucker Carlson and Don Lemon kind of canceled each other out. BuzzFeed News got shut down. And this is just the start. I I'm going to be clear. This is just the start because so many of these media outlets were not sustainable uh, everybody has kind of moved on. A lot of the traffic, as far as I'm aware, was fake. <laughs> That's a whole nother issue. The advertising has dropped. Uh, the venture capital has run out and time has run out for these journalists. And it is journalists who spend an awful lot of time on Twitter uh, complaining about YouTubers and at least in the pop culture space. And uh, we're going to touch on that too. And I'm going to talk about Twitter and I'm going to talk about the clownfishtv.com website and kind of where, you know, we're going to try to take our websites. Uh, we're really going to have to look at some other options here because yeah, I mean, the ad rates are not good uh, at all for anybody. The difference is we are small and nimble and we can adjust accordingly. And I think, I think smaller publications with dedicated audiences uh, will be fine, but a lot of journos are going to wind up out of work. Uh, and you know, look again, just like comics, the warning signs have been there for years and we've actually been sounding the alarm on, you know, I used to work as a journalist. Uh, we've been sounding the alarm on clownfish TV for probably four or five years now that digital journalism was going to implode, that the money was going to run out. Eventually the advertisers were going to catch on. They weren't getting a return on their investment. Um, a lot of the numbers were pumped up artificially and the, the, the plan, the business model for a lot of these websites you know, Vice and Vox and BuzzFeed and what is basically just bide your time, suck off the venture capital, puff up your numbers and then sell, give it curbside, curbside appeal. And that was a whole business model. Flipping websites was a whole business model for a while. And um, it's not a good business model. <laughs> it really isn't. And but the weird thing is, I think we're going to see a return of people to websites because of the uh, state of social media right now. And I think a lot of, you know, talented journalists, uh, people who are actually good at their job will probably start their own websites or their own like Substack newsletters or something, and they'll find their audience and they'll probably be fine. You know, or they'll pivot to video. God, you can't say that. Pivot to video. Uh, and they'll probably be fine. But we've seen a lot of these outlets try to do that uh, as a whole, like the Mary Sue and uh, let's see, Anime News Network is one that doesn't do very well on video. Um, G4, obviously the biggest, the biggest failure. They should have blown up on on Twitch and YouTube, and they didn't. They just they just blew up. So let's talk about another casualty of the media massacre. I'm your host, Neon. Join me on another journey into internet stupidity. We're going to talk about it. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. You'll get a woohoo. Woohoo. That's my woohoo. Geeky's not here. Uh, if you subscribe, we're, yeah, we're over 300 and some thousand. We need to do a live stream for that, but we haven't actually had the time to sit down and, and book the hours and hours and hours it takes to do live streams. Uh, weirdly, if you go out to Clownfish Gaming, we do shorter live streams out there and we just kind of chill, play games and, and whatever. You can check that out. But, uh, yeah, go to clownfishtv.com. Tons of content over there. A lot of this content we don't even talk about in videos because we don't have time. 
Uh, we do about three or four videos a day, Geeky and I, things that interest us or things that we're knowledgeable about. We have, uh, we have other writers out there that do uh, pick up the slack for us and uh, you know do reviews and try to keep things uh, unbiased. And basically, our goal is to have a website that rolls it back to about 2008, 2009. I think that was a pretty good period of time for pop culture sites. Uh, but let's talk about this. So uh, I found out that Vice was shutting down Waypoint, which I thought was I thought was shut down already from Palmer Lucky. Now Palmer Lucky was the uh, founding member of Oculus VR, the founder, Palmer Lucky. And uh, he has apparently been disparaged by the Kotakus and the Polygons, and he is celebrating celebrating Vice shutting down Waypoint. This is what he said. Vice is shutting down games media division Waypoint and laying off the entire staff. I wish I could be magnanimous, but no good riddance. Those assholes spread nasty lies about me for years in official and non-official capacities. Fuck capitalism and go home has been their podcast sign-off for years now. I thought he was kidding. He's not kidding. That's literally what they've been saying. I guess they finally got what they wanted. I'm sure most of them will find a home at one of the many outlets from the 0% interest days that don't care about ethical journalism practices or making money, but sometimes you have to appreciate the little wins. They're not going to find a place, I don't think, uh, very easily because so many of these, these websites are shutting down. They're shutting down. They're laying off. Where are you going to go? Especially if your attitude is fuck capitalism. Where are you going to go? What, what website makes money that has an attitude like fuck capitalism, right? That's not, a good, that's not a good mantra if you're trying to make money. For the people who think this is in poor taste, sorry, no sympathy. The lies these people told are part of why I had my entire company and identity ripped away from me. They went for my scalp kicked me while I was down, celebrated my fall, and derided my return. Screw them. Screw them. Uh, seems like you have a problem with journalists. I was a journalism major and the online editor of the school paper in California at Cal State, uh, University of Long Beach. I don't have a problem with most journalists. I have a problem with hateful lying ideologues masquerading as journalists. Same. Uh, I actually was. A journalist. I started out as a newspaper reporter, and then I wound up being an editor, and then eventually I was a managing editor, and then I made the jump into the internet and uh, marketing and uh, e-commerce and web development and all that that junk. Um, but I cut my teeth working as a journalist, and uh, you know what I'm seeing today is absolutely disgusting. It's basically activism, uh, you know, disguised as journalism, bloggers disguised as journalists. And yeah, you're allowed to give opinions, but you have to clearly, clearly mark that this is, this is an op-ed piece. This is my opinion. We disclaim our clownfish videos, news, views, and rants. We intermingle the news with the views and the rants. We never claim to be a news desk. We talk about things that happen and give our opinions. But a lot of these journalists, especially in the gaming space, pop culture space, they all think they're Lois Lane and they're all Rita Skeeter. Okay, dude, who got ostracized because you couldn't stop being a huge racist? You have fallen for a false narrative. I paid for an anti-Clinton billboard, but all those stories about me funding racist memes were based on a completely fabricated narrative spread by a handful of journalists. There was a reason nobody ever showed a single shred of evidence. So this also happened. Now, this is the first I've heard. I mean, I know who Palmer Lucky is, but this is the first I heard about the billboard and all that jazz. Um, this also happened with Troy Lovett. Troy Levitt, who was the uh, lead developer on Hogwarts Legacy, was effectively ousted because of Kotaku and Polygon getting together and pouring through his years-old YouTube video history to find videos that were uh, or could be misconstrued as being in support of Gamergate. The thing is, is Gamergate, as I understand it now, and I wasn't a part of it, but looking back on it and trying to look at it objectively, seemed to basically be gamers pushing back against the Kotakus and the Polygons and the Waypoints. You know, and there's a lot of messiness. It's not that cut and dry, but really when you boil it down, it was gamers revolting against the revolting journalists working for these media outlets. And a lot of people have been calling this out lately, and we're starting to see it now. Uh, people getting fired for nebulous reasons. Uh, again, limited run games. I will never, ever, ever buy another single one of their products because of the way that they treated Carolyn, who was their community manager. 
All she said was she was looking forward to Hogwarts Legacy, playing Hogwarts Legacy, and that's all it took for an activist to go, you know, tearing through her Twitter timeline, finding a tweet from seven or eight years ago that they could use to support their accusations of transphobia. And they got her fired from limited run games. I will never support that company. And I, I bought a lot of their product. I have a lot of limited run releases. I'm, I'm a huge retro game fan. I have a lot of physical releases. And I, I was I was incredibly pissed. Incredibly pissed. Because I'm like, I thought you guys were better than this. Uh, to fire somebody over a tweet. And a years old tweet was absolutely ridiculous. But that's what these journalists do. They spend their time picking targets and they do it in comics too. It's just video games are a much bigger, a much bigger thing. They find targets, they zero in those targets and they attack. And I can't even say it's for the clicks because it, it's turning out that a lot of these websites, a lot of the gaming sites, uh, their views are not coming from their hit pieces necessarily. Their views are coming from walkthroughs, archive news, older content, you know, and honestly, bought and paid for views. A lot of these websites, they'll do link exchanges. They will uh, spend a lot of money on Facebook to boost posts. This is why BuzzFeed kind of imploded. BuzzFeed's business model was boosting the shit out of their their posts on Facebook. And now Facebook's not working as well because Facebook's imploding, which again, the collapse of social media is going to lead to the collapse of a lot of these social media dependent websites. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. This is this is the article from GameIndustry.biz. Vice is shutting down its games publication Waypoint. The news came via Twitter from their senior writer, Patrick uh, Klaipik. Is it Klaipik? I don't, I don't listen to Waypoint. Uh, the team, myself included, have been terminated by Vice. And our final day running the website, the podcast, and the streams will come to an end on June 2nd. He wrote, I guarantee you Kotaku and Polygon will not be far behind. They are not bringing it. And uh, they will not be far behind. But Vice is really, really hurting right now. Waypoint should have ended a long time ago. At least he admitted it. We've always been an extremely weird website. Our podcast sign-off is fuck capitalism and go home after all. But we survived six long years. That's a GD eternity in media. We tried to hold on as long as we could. Waypoint Plus was a godsend. And to all the fans of Waypoint that showed up on day one, know your contributions and spirit and money were a huge reason we weren't laid off sooner. So basically, they had to pivot to a subscription model, but still not enough. You, alongside my talented colleagues, now over the years made waking up every day a joy. I'm going to I'm gonna pimp something here real quick. And I know people are going to be like, how dare you use their misery to make money, clownfish? I dare. I dare. Because we actually have our own uh, support system set up. Uh, we do. If you go to the website, you can see support us. Or if you go directly to directly to uh, the reef dot support. That's the reef dot support. Uh, we're going to be ramping that up because again, the ad rates are terrible and we actually want to keep our site. We want to keep our site online. We want to keep paying our writers. I know some of our writers are very concerned. We're not there yet, but uh, the ad rates are absolutely terrible. They're absolutely terrible. Um, the publication was launched by Vice in 2016 as an evolution of Vice Gaming and more recently launched premium subscription offering Waypoint Plus. Uh, multiple editorial staff were laid off at Vice late last year. Vice is done. This follows a number of layoffs and closure in games media such as The Washington Post shutting down Launcher, GameSpot and Giant Bomb affected by layoffs in January. GameSpot and Giant Bomb got sold for next to nothing. Uh, I think it's going to happen with Kotaku and Polygon too. Because, look, Kotaku, Kotaku is blacklisted by Nintendo. Do you know how bad you have to fuck up to be what, you, what you're touting as being a top-shelf video game website? And Nintendo will not give you the time of day because you've disparaged them and slammed them numerous times. And they don't want to play ball with you. And that is literally your only job is to get access to these big gaming developers, big game companies. Nintendo's the biggest player. And you can't get access because you're a garbage website. So you, you've definitely fucked up for sure. Um, so this is going to this is going to continue to happen. I want to talk about kind of where Twitter um, falls into this because Twitter was used to circulate a lot of this news. This is ground zero for a lot of these journalists. And Twitter is basically going uh, behind a paywall at this point. Now, I don't have a blue check on Twitter. I actually canceled mine because I, I don't intend to use Twitter very much. I've been back on the last couple of days. I popped in and uh, immediately got, got into a couple of fights. But I'm like, you know what? I don't really miss Twitter. 
I really don't. And it's it's I think what's hilarious is I'm I'm seeing all these people on Twitter. They've spent their entire like last five years building a, a toxic brand for themselves on Twitter, just completely losing their shit. They, they are because they don't want to pay for a blue check. But Musk has basically said, if you don't pay for a blue check, your stuff's not really going to get seen. So these people are going to be screaming into a void. They don't want to pay for, pay for a blue check. They actually, a lot of them didn't believe that Elon Musk had the capability to buy Twitter. They didn't think that it was going to end. So, I mean, this really, him buying Twitter, as much as I dislike some of the changes that are coming to Twitter, I, I don't like everything that I, I'm seeing, and I'll talk a little bit about that, but he tossed a fucking hand grenade into millennial media, into new media, like all these all these websites. Like, you can trace back Musk buying Twitter to being one of the major disruptors, and then, of course, we had the Silicon Valley Bank situation, all that, but they know they can't. They can't lock down Twitter anymore. They know a lot of people did leave, you know, for various reasons. And Twitter is going to be smaller uh, and more niche, I think. And it's going to be mostly paywalled. And they can't stand it because, you know, fuck capitalism and go home, right? You don't want to pay for a blue check. You don't want to pay for a gold check. You should get a blue check just because you wrote three articles on Waypoint. You wrote an article on Polygon 10 years ago. <laughs> you should get, you should get, and actually, um, was Polygon around 10 years? I don't think it was. Anyway, um, you should get a blue check for that. So yeah, so now the, the domino effect here is that a lot of websites are not going to be able to auto post their articles on Twitter anymore. And Twitter was used, and I think this, is, this all goes hand in hand, Twitter was used to circulate a lot of this news. And now you're not going to be able to auto post on Twitter as easily unless the company you're using, you know, paid for the API and all that jazz. Jetpack is not. So most, you know, WordPress sites, if they're using Jetpack to auto post their articles on Twitter, will no longer be able to do that. You will have to manually post each and every article. You can't just vomit out a hundred articles a day and have them drop on Twitter and then, you know, get the Twitter audio riled up about some, you know, conservative video game personality or whatever. It's not, it's not going to work anymore. Um, what they're actually going to do, as I understand it, is Musk is going to paywall individual articles and then charge users, or you have the option of charging users to read those articles behind the paywall. I don't know if it's going to work or not. I don't know. Are people going to pay for news? Do people pay for news? People pay for some news. It depends on the outlet. I mean, you've got, you know, sites like the Daily Wire and stuff doing very well. I'm sure there are some left-wing um, alternatives that are doing well with, you know, subscriptions and, and, uh, direct support, even though most of the people that read those sites are like, fuck capitalism and go home. Um, but you know what I'm saying? So people are willing to pay for certain websites that have a certain flavor they're looking for or whatever, but the vast majority of websites just circulating news are not it, man. They're not it. Um, and so a lot of these, these, I mean, look, Waypoint has subscription service and a lot of people showed up for that, I guess, and they still couldn't keep it going. I don't think this is going to work. I think the changes to Twitter are going to lead to a cascade effect between Twitter and the venture capital running out and Facebook being completely worthless now to circulate content and the Google algorithm changing, right? And a lot of these people not pivoting the video when they should have, you know, 10 years ago, five years ago, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be this huge domino effect that's going to take out a lot of these websites. And I'm sorry, I don't feel that bad about a lot of these websites going under because they were never really sustainable. The writing has been on the wall. These journalists could have jumped ship anytime they wanted to. And I'm not saying every journalist at every website is garbage, but there, there is an, there's a disproportionate amount of garbage activist journalists or activists posing as journalists working for gaming and pop culture sites. And the reason we're having the culture wars, in my opinion, is because of that. Because they've been stirring the shit up for like a decade. And it's coming to a head now. Now that the money's running out, you know, now that the money's running out, fuck capitalism and go home. Everybody's going home. You know, you're going home. And you're going to have to find something else to do, I guess. I'm going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants. And we'll talk later. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support 
and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.